Alright, hey, welcome to my channel. My name is Jessie and today I'm wrapping up the 10 books I read in November. So, not to be redundant and repetitive, and I know I've said this several months in a row, but I'm once again surprised at how well the quantity of books I read in December was. The, qu the quality, once again, was amazing, but I am still a little surprised that I read as many as I did. And it's no longer because of school, because I think I have down the way to for me to balance schoolwork versus taking care of my family versus reading for fun. I haven't quite figured out how to balance in, you know, videoing, making videos and editing those videos, but I have gotten down the balance of reading for fun and for pleasure along with doing schoolwork. But I am surprised because in November, my son had heart surgery in the middle of the month. And so the first two weeks of the month, I don't think I read quite as much as I'd wanted to or would have wanted to if, you know, we had another, hadn't had other stuff going on. And so the first two weeks of the month, you know, I read a little bit, but at the same time, I was trying to get ahead on schoolwork. That way, if anything went wrong with the surgery or just if Rowan needed more recovery time than we expected, then I wouldn't have had to open my school stuff at all, which my professors knew what was going on. So I could have asked for extensions and help if I needed to, but I was trying not to do that. And then on top of like, you know, uh, getting schoolwork ready, I was also trying to get the house ready, making sure it was deep cleaned because we were gonna be gone for, we were gone for almost two weeks, um, like just with everything that went on. But uh, Rowan's surgery went great. It was pretty straightforward from the beginning when they first told us about what they were doing. And then the actual day of the surgery went very smoothly. His recovery has gone really well. He actually was able to go home from the hospital about two days earlier than what they originally predicted. So Rowan's, going, Rowan's recovery is going really well. And now that is December 1st for my time. I'm going to tell you about the books I read in November. The past couple months, I think I have done these in, you know, rating order. So I rated my favorite books, my least favorite. I think this month, because I had trouble picking a favorite, I'm going to rate my books in the order that I read them. The first book I finished in November was The, the Inheritance of Orchidea Divina by Zoraida Cordova. And this book is kind of like a family story and it's kind of magical realism almost. But it's about this um, Orchidea Divina. She is an elderly woman. She is actually a like, even great grandmother at this point. And she's dying. She's clinging to a tree. She calls her whole family back to her home. Um, it's a huge family. There's a lot of rocky issues. She gives everyone some gifts. The people who take care of their gifts start to flourish and have good things happen. And the people who don't kind of have some bad luck. And then a few years later, the family learns about, I think, this curse. And you follow a couple of the family members while they go to figure out what's going on. And in that time, it's kind of interspersed with like Orchidea Davina's backstory, her history and her childhood and how she became who she is. And so I actually really enjoyed this book. At times it reminded me of Addie LaRue, which I don't think is technically a fair comparison, especially coming from me because I didn't mind Addie LaRue, but I didn't love it in the same way I love this book. But I think the idea of just the way the story was told and that like the way the magic was included, they reminded me of each other. And so like, I think, you know, if you liked Addie LaRue, there's a good chance you might like this book. Um, I don't like, you know, there's no guarantee that if you like one, you like the other because you know, I didn't like Addie LaRue that much, but I loved this book and it was great. But I would say this one was definitely worth the read for me. I really enjoyed seeing all the characters. I enjoyed seeing the family dynamic. I enjoyed learning about, you know, each character's past and what made them who they were. And I thought Orchidea Davina was a very interesting character as well, despite the fact that, you know, for most of the story, you don't see her as like her current character. You see her as she became who she was. The next book I finished was Curses by Lish McBride, and I rated it four stars. It is a kind of Beauty and the Beast retelling, but it's gender bent where Princess Merit is the one who becomes the beast. And this guy named Tevin, who is kind of a swindler almost, um, he and his family, they kind of uh, scam people out of money. And he does it because he's trying to keep his siblings safe and is all he's known how to do. And somehow he ends up being roped into helping Merit either find someone who will love her and love her back within six weeks, or she will have to marry her someone of her mother's choosing within six weeks. And in that time, and if she doesn't meet that time frame or meet those expectations within that time frame, she will become a beast permanently. And when she's in her beast form, sometimes she loses control of her own mind and she has blackouts and doesn't remember what happened. And so I think this book was just really fun. There was other fairy magic included as well. For example, Tevin and his siblings all had their own touch of fairy magic that helped them complete their parents' wishes. And then, you know, Tevin's cousin played a role. Uh, Merit and her group of people were really interesting. It was just a lot of fun. I had a really good time with it. 
At first I was afraid it was going to be a little cheesy, and maybe it was, but I still had fun with it. I don't actually remember if it was cheesy, but I know I had a lot of fun with it, and it's a book I could see myself eventually rereading. The next book I finished was A Lot Like Adios by Alexis Daria, and this book follows Michelle and Gabe. Michelle and Gabe were childhood best friends, and then whenever they, it was time for them to graduate high school and go to college, Gabe just kind of left without giving a real goodbye, and they haven't seen each other or really spoken to each other in I think about 13 years. And so now Gabe's company, he, like, he co-founded this really big gym in, I think, California. They were wanting to open a location in New York. And so somehow he and Michelle end up working together to, I guess, create like a marketing strategy for it. And along the way, they develop feelings again, or they really ha they had feelings for each other kind of at the end of high school, but they're starting to like redevelop. Um, they're kind of exploring them, but with like a timeline in mind for when everything will end. And so I actually really enjoyed this book. I will say that I do think I liked a lot. You had me a lot a little bit better. I think I liked Jasmine's story a little bit better. I think I liked you know if there were a little bit more other characters included. Whereas this book, Gabe and Michelle are almost exclusively alone together. And so I think I wish that they'd spent a little bit more time doing other stuff with other characters. But overall, I actually really enjoyed this. The next book I read was The Dead and the Dark by Courtney Gold, and I rated it four stars. This book follows Logan, and her dads are both, they have a ghost hunting show, and somehow her whole family ends up going back to Snake by Oregon, which is where her fathers were originally from. And she meets this person named Ashley, and there's just a lot of weird things going on in Snake by Oregon. Ashley's boyfriend recently disappeared, and no one can find him. And for some reason, a lot of people think that um, Logan's dads might somehow be involved. Logan's, you know, trying to prove that her dads are innocent, and then Ashley is just trying to prove or find out wherever her boyfriend went. And there's a lot more to the story than that, but it was just, it was really good, and it was really a good story. I really enjoyed it. I do eventually want to get a physical copy of the book and reread it, but I read the ebook and I had a really good time with it. Or did I read the audiobook? I may have read the audiobook. I don't remember for sure. Maybe the audiobook, but I had a really good time with it either way. It was really fun. It's like, it kind of actually reminded me of books I read when I was a kid, because I remember reading a lot more ghost story books when I was a kid, and I don't really remember reading any, like, after I got into high school. Whenever I would go to the book fair as a kid, the main books I would end up leaving with, I remember being ghost stories, and so I think that's kind of interesting. But not like, you know, oh, I can't remember the name of the author, or the name of the series, but like the scary stories. It just reminded me of stuff I'd read as a kid, but like, a more grown-up version, not an adult version, but more grown-up than like, my elementary to maybe junior myself. I also read Instructions for Dancing by Nicola Yoon and gave it four stars. This book follows Evie and something happens and she no longer believes in love. Whenever she sees couples kiss, she can see their relationship from the beginning to the end, whether they end up breaking up for whatever reason or someone dies tragically, she just sees the whole thing. And so she's just sworn off love. She's never going to fall for it again. She used to love, she used to love love. She used to love romance novels and she's just not into it anymore. She somehow ends up going to this dance uh, studio and she meets this guy named X and they end up entering like an amateur ballroom dance competition together. And along the way, Evie ends up falling for him. This could be a potential spoiler, um, but I forgot that Nicola Yoon's books don't technically have happy endings. Like it wasn't an unhappy ending. It's just, I teared up a little at the end. And like remember, remember I read it and then I was like actually then I was like wait a minute I read The Sun is Also a Star and that one had kind of a bittersweet ending too. And then I don't remember uh, the ending of Everything Everything but I'm sure it was probably bittersweet too based off you know this and what I remember of um, The Sun is Also a Star. But I did really enjoy this book. It was really good. I really enjoyed Evie's character. Uh, this book I read physically and I had so much trouble putting it down. Um, it was such a great book and I had a really good time with it. I was just sad whenever I got to the end because it was bittersweet. You know, Evie, Evie's problem is solved, her conflict is solved, but there's another issue that comes up. But it was a really good book. I really enjoyed it. So I think if you like Nicola Newton's other books, you should definitely read this. I also read Hood Feminism by Mickey Kendall, and I rated the book five stars. Uh, I had intended to read more nonfiction books during nonfiction November, but this was the one and only one I read. And it was so like eye-opening in some ways because there were some things that you know made sense like why don't why haven't I noticed these as something that should be a feminist issue and then whenever the book brought it up it's like okay duh it makes sense and the way the book explained everything and talked about everything it was really eye-opening I think if you haven't read it yet it's one you should definitely look into and I, it's one that I want to get a physical copy of to go back and reread eventually uh it brings up you know how so many different issues are in like feminist but also how they how you know feminism in general has always been geared more towards white women 
and that, you know, it often leaves behind women of color. And so I actually really enjoyed this book. I also read You Deserve Each Other by Sarah Hogel and narrated it four stars. This book follows Naomi and Nicholas. They are engaged and suddenly neither of them wants to call off the wedding even though they appear to no longer want to be getting married. They start pranking each other and trying to convince the other one to call off the wedding. One of them doesn't want to be responsible for dealing with the family repercussions and the other doesn't want to have the financial burden of canceling the wedding. And so as the book goes on though, you kind of learn it's a little bit deeper than that. Like there's other stuff going on too. They both kind of have their own issues that they neither of them work to fix at first. And so, and you also kind of learn like, you know, they both kind of resent each other for different things that they never really worked through. But you also learn that their relationship kind of was like almost a whirlwind. You know, they got together so quickly, they moved in together so quickly and they got engaged so quickly. And so it's a really interesting book and I actually had a lot of fun with it. I also ended up reading Seven Days in June by Tia Williams. I started off reading it on Libby as a lucky day seven day checkout. And then I got to a little over a, thir a third of the way through it before I ran out of time. And so I went ahead and bought the physical version and I was reminded why I don't buy hardcover adult books full price because this was like expensive. I normally either wait for them to come out in paperback or to be on sale or something. I wanted to finish the book I didn't want to have to wait like at least a month or more to finish it and so I am so glad I bought this it was another five star read for me this book follows Ava and Shane Ava and Shane have like a fling for seven days in June at their senior year of high school it's a few years later I don't quite remember how many years later it is and they are both established published and well-known writers Ava writes um this like erotic series with about two characters that's heavily based off her time with Shane and it's like her way of working through it, right? And then Shane, at the same time, he's written like several books that are definitely seem to be about, it seemed to be about Ava. And it's about this character, you know, who struggles. And his books, I guess, are seen more as like literary fiction, where hers are seen, I guess, more as like being closer to chiclet. But either way, uh, Shane suddenly comes back into Ava's life and you follow this book across seven days in June while they either work through things to see, to see if they can ever work again or and you like they work through their own personal issues that are going on and this is a really good book i had a really good time with it i can definitely see the hype around it um i remember like or like late summer early fall i remember seeing a lot of people i follow talk about this book and i wanted to read it but it wasn't like one that i thought about putting a hold on and then earlier in the month i saw it on libby and i was like i'm gonna read it whenever i saw it on the seven day uh, lucky day hold and so it was a really good book. I really appreciate it. I am glad I bought it despite the fact that I am a little bummed at how much I spent on it. But it was a really good book and I had a really good time with it and it's one I could see myself going back to in the future. I also read The Worst Best Man by Mia Sosa and this book follows Lena and Max. A couple of years earlier Lena was left at the altar by Max's brother and now it's a few years later they are kind of having to work together. Max and his brother work at like their mom's um like PR firm essentially. I don't know if it's PR, but it's like something along those lines. And me and Lena is a wedding planner and the hotel wants to hire her as a wedding planner, but she has to, you know, kind of go through an interview process. And so she and Max end up working together. Along the way, they kind of develop feelings. At first, they decide it's just going to be, you know, like a intimacy thing only, or not intimacy, it's going to be a physical thing only. They're not going to you know, it can't be long term, it's just temporary to get get it out of their system. But they both definitely have feelings. They are both, I would say that they're both, they both have their own reasons for not trying to make it work. And one of those reasons being, you know, that Lena was at one point engaged to Max's brother. And I think like, it was a really good book. I actually had a lot of fun with Lena's character. I thought she was interesting. I, and Max's character was interesting as well. I do like that they, for the most part, they didn't compare Max and his brother too, too much. Like, especially when we got to like the more intimate scenes, because I don't know, I don't know why an author would do that. But like, it's not outside the realm of possibilities for an author to do that. So I'm glad that didn't happen. But Lena and Max, I actually really enjoyed them together. I thought they were cute. Um, I overall really enjoyed the book and had a really good time with it. The final book I read in, in November was Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard. And I rated this book three stars. So it is my lowest rated book of the month, but I still liked it for the most part. And I do plan to continue with the series. I want to read this series before I read uh, Realm or the new her new series, Victoria Aveyard's new series. I can't remember the name of it, but I think it's supposed to be set in the same world as this or same universe. So I want to read these first. That way I kind of know the backstory and stuff. Anyways, though, this book follows Mayor and it's kind of set in a world where, you know, people have read, where I guess people have evolved. I guess it's like almost more sci-fi than fantasy 
where I expected to be more fantasy than sci-fi, but Mare and her family and like the common people have red blood, they have no powers, they have no special abilities, and they're kind of looked down upon. They're the ones who do the jobs that the silver people don't want. They're the ones that provide for the silver people and follow the rules. Whereas the people with silver blood, they can have powers and abilities that regular people wouldn't have. And so somehow Mare ends up roped into, roped into something and along the way, she finds out that she has powers that she shouldn't have because she still has red blood. And so she ends up like temporarily engaged to one of the princes, but she has feelings for someone else. And then she's like spends the whole time really trying to keep her family and her best friend safe. But at the same time, she, there's this growing rebellion of reds who don't want things to continue the way they have. And so she ends up roped into that as well. The end of the book, I don't know if the end of the book really made up for it. Cause I, I posted on Instagram, you know, that like, I wanted to love this book, but I just had kind of meh feelings about it. And a lot of people, you know, were either saying, you know, the first, most of the book is kind of rough, but the ending is great. Or if they weren't saying that, they were saying, you know, the first two books aren't the best, but the, the second two books are great. And so I, it's, it wasn't the great, it wasn't my favorite book, but I liked it enough to continue with the series. And so I am interested to see like what's going to happen and if I'm going to continue to like the series. And I hope I like the series because I'd already put the second book on my Christmas list for Christmas Family. Anyway, the, those are all the books I read in November. Overall, it was a pretty great reading month, a lot better than I expected, and I had a really good time with it. And I'm really interested to see how December goes, um, especially because today's the first. I think this is going up on the 5th, maybe. And then, and then uh, my last day of the semester is the 10th. So I am almost done with my first semester of graduate school. I am excited. It's about to be over with. I'm ready for this little break and then to go back next in the spring. But anyways, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and I will talk to you later.